Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. And welcome back to Logic Pro Explored, my series where I'm doing a deep dive on each of the sections and windows in Logic Pro. Today, we'll finally be finishing up our examination of the control bar. This is now the fifth video in this series that has focused just on the control bar really goes to show what an important and powerful section of Logic Pro it is, even if it's often overlooked. If you need to get caught up on the entire series, click right up here in the card to check out the Logic Pro Explored playlist. In the last video, we looked at the modes and functions of the control bar, but I intentionally skipped over two functions found in that section. Those are the metronome and the count in functions. These are such fundamental aspects to understand how to use and tweak that I thought it was best to dedicate a full video to them. Let's dive in. Both the metronome and the count in functions are visible in the control bar by default, but if for some reason you don't see them, you can always right click anywhere in the control bar, go to customize control bar and display, and tick on the view of them right near the bottom of the modes and function settings. Let's start by looking at the metronome button, which of course enables or disables the click track. And just a note, I'll be using those terms metronome and click track interchangeably in this video. They mean the exact same thing. By default, when this is on, the click track will sound during playback and recording, giving a steady rhythmical reference that matches the set project BPM we can quickly turn it on or off by using the keyboard shortcut K. We can start to customize the actions of the metronome by clicking and holding on the icon in the control bar and then turning off simple mode. Now we can choose exactly when we would like the click track to play. By default, we see it clicks during recording and playback, but if we want it to only click while recording, we can deselect during playback. This is how I typically like to have mine set up. Of course, if you would like it to do the opposite and only play during playback but not recording, we can set that up as well by selecting during playback and deselecting during recording. There's one more option, which is this sub option underneath during recording called only during count in, which will play the click track only during the predefined count in time and stop once the recording actually begins. This can be helpful if you just want to get a reference of the correct tempo right before recording, but then lock your groove into some other element like a recorded drum part or even just your own internal rhythm. But the real customization comes in by clicking and holding on the metronome icon and then going to the metronome settings. We have those same four options as before at the top, along with an extra option called polyphonic clicks. We'll get to that one in a moment, but for now, let's turn our attention to the bottom half of this menu, because that's where we can really dial in the sound. The main controls here are the customization of the pitch and velocity for the click track on each of these four rhythmical divisions. Bar, the click that happens on the downbeat of every bar. Group, the click that happens on the beat groupings in compound meters. For example, a measure of 5-4 can be grouped into one group of two beats followed by one group of three beats. Beat, the click that happens on every beat, so four of these clicks per bar in 4-4. Four, four. And Division, the click that happens on each division of the beat as defined by the division setting in the LCD. By default, Division is turned off, but if we enable it with our division value of slash 16, we hear that the click is sounding on every 16th note. In each of these rhythmic values, we can define a different pitch and velocity for the click track to sound at. This can help us to refine what rhythm we want to emphasize to aid our recording. Most of the time, we would want the downbeat of a bar to be a bit higher and louder, but not always. Some parts or some musicians may prefer to hear an even beat click the whole way through, in which case we could just disable everything but the beat value. And most importantly, modifying these settings is very important when working with compound meters, especially one that's quite common and that's 6-8. If we have the metronome in its default settings and change our meter to 6-8, check out what the click sounds like. 
it's playing a click on every single eighth note. And this is typically not what musicians want to hear when playing in 6-8. Most of the time, we would wanna hear one click for every group of three eighth notes, so two clicks per bar. To accomplish this, all we have to do is deselect the beat value and leave on just bar and group. Now we get that more natural 6-8 click track sound. And a little tip here with this setup, only bar and group on, simple meters like 4-4 four, four still click in the normal fashion. Since the beat grouping in 4-4 four, four is just one beat per group, making it the exact same as the beat value. So I like to always have my metronome set up just like this, so I can change between simple and compound meters without having to adjust the metronome settings every time. Hopefully you can see just how important this little section of the metronome settings is. And the other thing to know about it is how it's affected by this setting called polyphonic clicks that I skipped over earlier. With this setting on, the clicks that overlap each other will all play together. So the notes of the bar, group, and beat will all sound right on the downbeat. If the polyphonic click setting is off, only the largest value plays at its given time. So on the downbeat, only the pitch set for the bar will sound. I typically like having the polyphonic setting on, but I do recommend setting the different pitches to something dissonant, as if they're set to a harmonic chord, it can sound strange when combined with your music. If it's in the same key as your song, it can almost sound like another instrument and blend in too much. By setting dissonant notes like half steps, we can ensure the click stands out, which allows our ears to latch onto it better while recording. Below these rhythmic value settings, we have some macro controls for the click sound. The tone slider adjusts the timbre of the click sound. The higher settings sound more pitched like a wood block or clave, and the lower settings sound less pitch and just more like a short click. Below that, we have a volume slider to quickly adjust the overall level of the click track. And then we have the output channel of the click. Most of the time, you'd want to leave this set to your default stereo output. But if you have a setup that combines headphones and speakers with two different output paths, you may want the click only going to the artist's headphones and not to the speakers in the control room. For example, you could have your control room speakers coming out of output one and two on your interface, but your headphone amp coming out of output three and four. In that case, you could change the click output to three and four so it only sounds in the artist's headphones. If you do have this setup, just make sure to send all of your other tracks to output three and four as well so that the artist hears the music and not just the click track. Before we continue on with the video, I wanna show you how to get the most out of Logic Pro. Listen, I love Logic, but the truth is that right out of the box or should I say right out of the app store, it is not fully optimized for musicians, producers, and audio engineers. There are just some truly strange default settings in Logic Pro. That's why I created the Logic Pro Optimization Guide, a free to download video guide and accompanying PDF cheat sheet that walks you through step-by-step -step all of the settings to change in order to get the most out of Logic Pro. These setting changes will benefit first-time Logic Pro users and wily Logic Pro vets alike. I truly believe that by changing these settings, you will not only improve your workflow, but actually speed up your music making process. So if you wanna take control of the DAW and optimize Logic Pro, click the link in the description box below the like button and download the Logic Pro optimization guide. It's all yours, completely free. That's a lot of control already over the sound and function of the click track, but we can actually take it to the next level by finding the channel strip for the click track in the mixer window. It's always there, it's just hidden by default. To access it, we have to switch this tab at the top of the mixer window from tracks to all. And when we do, we'll see the channel strip for the click appear. 
Note, it is solo safed by default, meaning that it will still sound even when we solo a different track, but we could change this setting if we wanted to by control clicking on the solo button and that little red slash will go away. Having access to this channel strip allows us to do a few things. For starters, it's another way to change the output and routing of the click track. Here we could even send it out buses if we have super complicated routing setups with multiple headphone mixes for multiple musicians, each wanting their own click level. The other perhaps more powerful thing it does is let us change the default click track instrument. The default instrument for the click in Logic is called Klopfgeist, which fun fact is the German word for poltergeist, which literally translates to knocking ghost. Pretty cool, pretty appropriate. If we open up Klopfgeist, we see we have some more control over the sound of our click. We can change the trigger mode here, which is the same thing as turning on or off polyphonic clicks in the metronome settings window. We have macro tuning controls for all of the clicks in semitone increments on the left knob, and then sense within those semitones on the right knob. The tonality slider matches the tone slider in the metronome settings menu. And the damp slider is sort of like a release control. If we have the tone all the way up so that the sound is more tonal and then raise the damp slider to its highest setting, we hear that those tonal blips get more and more chopped off as the damp slider is increased, making them sound more like the clicks of lower tone settings. So the higher the damp setting, the shorter the release or sustain of each click. We can tweak both of these sliders to further dial in the sound of the click that we like. Personally, I like the tone and damp on the lower side as I like a bit of a softer, less biting click sound that's easier on the ears during long recording sessions. The final setting inside the plugin is the level range. Here we can define the low end and high end of the velocity range. A velocity setting of 127 in the settings window will correspond to the upper dB value set here, and a velocity of 1 will correspond to the lower dB value. But the really cool thing is that we don't have to use Klopfgeist at all. We can use any software instrument plugin we want. Just replace the instance of Klopfgeist with the plugin of your choosing. For this example, I'm going to go with Native Instruments Battery. Then we can load up any sound we want to use as the click track. I'll choose this kit to start with and then find a sample in it that I would like to use as my new click sound. This little 909 rim shot sounds cool. Now all we need to do is come down here and find out which note is triggering this sound. In this case it's D5. Then we can come back to the metronome settings window and change the beat, group, and bar note values to D5. Now this rim shot sound is the click track. We could even choose a different drum sample to play on the bar lines. Just find another sample we like, like this clap sound, which is sounding on D sharp five. And by changing the note value of the bar division to D sharp five, we have a fully customized click track sound. Do note the only plugin that will not work as a replacement for Klopfgeist is Drum Machine Designer. I assume because Logic won't make a track stack for the click track and that is required to load a Drum Machine Designer patch. There is a way to bypass the Logic Pro click track entirely and use an external MIDI device as a click track sound generator. To do this we go back to the metronome settings menu and start by ticking off audio click. This will completely disable Logic's click track sound. Then we can use this section to the right to set up the parameters for the MIDI device that will be generating the click track sounds. We again have note and velocity control for each rhythmic value, but here we can also define which MIDI channel each of these values will be sent out. This will have Logic send the click track pulses to the external MIDI device on separate MIDI channels, allowing you to set up your MIDI device to trigger different sounds for each rhythmic value, similar to how we set up battery. And then the final step would just be to choose that MIDI device from this port list. The cool thing about this setup is that Logic is still generating the click pulses, meaning everything stays synced up perfectly and any changes to the tempo or meter are reflected in those outgoing signals. This MIDI click feature just allows us to have an external device create the sounds of the click track. 
This is completely different from having an external device be the clock source or synchronization device. That takes care of all of the tweakability of the metronome, but there is still the metronome's counterpart function, count in, to discuss. It is enabled and disabled with this one, two, three, four button in the control bar, and it can quickly be toggled on and off with the keyboard shortcut shift K. The count in allows us to define the amount of time before the recording starts that we want playback to start. And we set that amount by clicking and holding on the count in button in the control bar. For example, with a setting of one bar, when I hit record with the playhead at bar three, playback will start at bar two, and then the recording will start at bar three. This allows us to have as much or as little pre-roll as we want before recording to get into the groove and prepare before the recording actually begins. This is an enormously helpful feature, but the best part about it is actually a bit hidden. Logic is secretly recording during the count in. Although it doesn't look like it at first, we can see that I can drag back on the start of this recorded region and reveal what I was playing during the count in. This is so helpful for making more precise edits at punch in points to add crossfades or just for capturing a cool idea or alternative take you happen to play during the count in. You can even change the meter of the click in bars without changing the meter of the project itself. I don't find this really useful. I think I've only ever used it one time when an artist wanted just a two bar count in. So for that, I would choose one bar and then change the meter to two, four to give me that two beat count in. Most of the time though, I find one to two bars in the meter of the project to be preferable. The last editable setting of the count in is actually found in the recording settings menu, which we can access from the click and hold menu on the count in button. And that's the ability to change from a count in of specific bars and beats to a pre-roll that is in amount of seconds. And we do that simply by clicking this circle next to pre-roll to change the mode and then typing in the amount of seconds we want the pre-roll to last for. I don't really find this very helpful since I'm recording music that has a set BPM and meter and I want to have that count in defined the same way. But if you like setting an amount of time for your count in, that's how you do it. There we go, everything you ever needed to know about the metronome and count in features in Logic Pro and the final discussion of the control bar in this series. We'll move on to the next section down in the screen in the next video. And here's a hint, it's a hidden section, but one that contains a lot of useful functions. Stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.